This Sunday is last Sunday. Um, I've been preaching a series of message on how God raises me. And I've mentioned before that this has many ways to reach people. Um, it's a way for you to understand that if you're a child of God, this is how God is going to deal with you. If you'll let God deal with you this way, then you know then you are a child of God. You know that you belong to Him, and you know that you have eternal life, you have everlasting life, and you will always have that. But when you do something that you're not supposed to do as a Christian, which does happen... And I never, ever, ever want Bethel Church to have a reputation that it's a church of people who believe that they have nothing wrong in their life and they never do anything wrong. I don't want us to have anybody say that about this church. What I want said about this church is it is a church full of sinners. Now, some people may not like that. I don't care. But it is a church of people that want to go to heaven and are willing to allow God to use his rod of chastening on their life if and when they need that rod. Can I hear God's people say amen? amen. So Hebrews chapter 12. I want you to look at, I want to read down verse 1, start there and move my way down. Because I think it all ties together. All these people, all these people in Hebrews 11, we call Hebrews 11 the faith hall of fame. These are all people in the Bible that, you know, God, they had great faith in God and God did great things with. But let me also tell you, these are people in the Bible that also did something wrong. And God at one point or another had to intervene and chasten them. These were sinners. That God used. But they had faith. And they let God as their father chasten them. So, wherefore, verse 1, also we, have com we are compassed with such uh, so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which did so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Forget about your past. Somebody say amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one that we're looking toward. Looking forward to the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand of God, uh, of the throne of God. You've heard me preach how Jesus looked beyond the shame and the punishment of the cross. He looked around that and said, what's waiting for me on the other side of that is worth me going through that. I mean, it, I ask yourself the question. Suppose, suppose you had a wallet. You had just taken money out of the bank. You had a wallet and it had, let's say, $10,000 in cash in it. And that wallet, you just happen to be at, you know, one of those, you know, state parks. And the state park bathrooms, what are they like? They're holes in the ground. Full of the. And suppose that something happened and you dropped that wallet with that $10,000 in cash down in that. Would you go get it? Yes! That's what I'm talking about. There's stuff between here and heaven. And you may not like it. But I promise you, it's worth going through it to get there. Verse 3, for considered him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be wearied in feigned minds. 
And you have not resisted unto blood and striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the, underline this in your Bible, please. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. And if ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Let me hear God's people say amen to that. Let's go to prayer. Father, I ask your help in preaching this message because I have things in my mind, God, that I want to say that I don't think would be right to say. And Lord, there's a lot of the devil's working in my mind. And I don't like it. Get him out of there. And Father, I pray, dear God, that you would help me preach the message. Lead me the way you would want me to help me to say what you want me to say. Because I could say it all wrong. And mess everything up. I'm capable of doing it. So Father, I pray God that you would speak today through me. And let it not be me. These are your people, God. You love them. You must love them. And God, if you love them, I love them. And God, it doesn't matter what they've done, where they've been, where they've come from. It doesn't matter the slop that they were part of. God, you prized them and you valued them and you loved them and you said, I'll clean them. And I'll make them my sons and my daughters. Father, that's what we're asking today. God, that you raise us right and teach us, Father, how to raise our children. Teach us, Father, as parents that we have to use the rod of chastening. Teach us as managers, bosses, officials, people who are in some type of authority that when People under us don't do right. There has to be some form of punishment and retribution in order to make that employee right again. Now, Father, I pray, dear God, that you would just give us that strength and teach us wisdom, Father. Help us to do right. Do right in us, we pray. And help me to preach, Father, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Let me read to you what's up on the screen. See, God is, will always with us use the rod of correction. And when he says rod, he means, you know, I put up this up on the screen. I've had a belt taken to me. I've had a switch taken to me. My wife raised our children in church with a spoon. Some of you have had a razor strap. Some of you have had a cane taken to you, some sort of rod or a stick. When God said rod, he meant rod. He meant use physical, a strike against the back of their legs or the back of their bottom. God gave every one of us a big fluffy backside that has no important organs in it. A lot of fat and a lot of nerves. You ever notice that? I mean, there's some parts like right here on the, end, on the end of your elbow here. Everybody touch the end of your elbow. There's not a lot of nerves there, is there? So if you got a spanking on the end of your elbow, that wouldn't hurt that bad. But back here where there's no important organs... A lot of fat, God put a lot of nerves back there. Because that's where the blow or the strike of the rod or the leather that you're using or whatever it is, that's where that's to be applied. And it is done to teach them that what they did was wrong and what they did 
if they grow up and do something wrong as a grown up when they don't have an adult over them anymore, that if they do wrong, it's still going to hurt them. Am I right? Every adult learns that after we grow up, get away from mom and daddy. Now mom and daddy can't with me no more. They grow up, they get to a place where they learn that when they do things that are wrong, it hurts. There is punishment for that. We tried to teach them that when they were little children. Psalm 94 verse 11. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest. You know what the word blessing means? Saved. Blessing is always a word linked to salvation. If you are blessed, that means God saved you. If you are cursed, that means you're dying and going to the lake of fire for all of eternity. Amen? If I had to ask you this morning, do you want to be blessed? Everybody say, yeah, I want to be blessed. Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer would tell you, hey, if you just want to be blessed, you just got to speak blessing in your life. All of a sudden, showers of money come down and your health, you're healthy all the time and you don't have to worry about it. That is not how it works. God said, if you want to be blessed, I'll have to chasten you. Bless it. By the way, God, read the first part of that verse. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. It is not how you think. That makes your life better. You cannot think yourself and grow rich. You cannot think yourself healthy. You cannot think and add a cubit to your stature. God, those people are lying through their teeth. God knows your thoughts that they are vain. They are vanity. They are worth nothing. So then God knows that he's got to chase in you. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teaches him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. One of these days, God's going to take everybody that would not allow him to chasten them, and he's going to throw them in the pit of the wicked. But the rest of us, God is going to put in a place of heavenly righteousness. Somebody say amen. Proverbs thirteen twenty four. He that's, look at your Bible. Proverbs 13, 24, turn there and underline that in your Bible. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. Now you read your Bible, you tell me how wrong I am. If God had not taken a rod to me, I would not be standing here today. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. But he that loveth him chasteneth, chasteneth him betimes. I had to look that word up, Brian. Betimes means early. Give it to him close to when he did it. Like. Child comes in, you ask him, did you, did you clean your room? And they said yes, and you know that they lied. Don't wait till a year from next Friday to whip them for that. Whip them now. Because they will, in their mind, attach their sin with the trouble that it caused them instantly. Now, I want to say this. Now, I better keep preaching. I better keep, better keep with, I better keep with what the Bible says here. Proverbs 13, 24, He that spared this rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him be times. Proverbs 19, turn there. Proverbs 19, verse 18. Chasten thy son while there is hope. And let not thy soul spare for his crying. The first time I got a whipping in school. My teacher, Mr. Brown. Took a paddle. 
and hit me so hard on my backside. The print, I was facing the principal. He looked at me in shock at the face that I made when I got hit that first time with that paddle. I don't know if he'd never seen a, a boy look that much in terror. But he hurt me bad. And I went, ah! And I started crying. And you know what? He didn't say, oh, he's crying. I better not do it again. He had already had it in his mind. I was getting three swats. You know how many swats I got, George? Three! They didn't stop because I started crying. Let, you know what, you know what children will do? They will play games with mom and dad. They will say, oh, mom and dad, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. You know what they're doing? Try not to get a whipping. Oh, I'm so sorry, mama, please don't whip me. You know what you ought to do? Say, get up. You're getting your whipping. Because kids know how to play mom and dad, don't they? I, I get played. I'm easy to play. You can convince me of anything until God shows me that you're a liar. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 32. Turn there and look in your Bible. 1 Corinthians eleven thirty two. This is how God's raising me. This is how God, if he loves you, listen to me, if God loves you, God will raise you this way. If you will allow God to raise you this way, God's got a house for you in heaven. If you will not allow God to raise you this way, there is a pit dug for the wicked and you're headed for it. It's that simple. So 1 Corinthians eleven thirty two. 32, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Understand that verse? Brother Edward, I'm going to remind you of something you said in this church that blessed me probably as much as anybody who's ever stood and spoken in this church has ever blessed me. This was after the Ferguson shooting. You remember that? And I, I wasn't asking for anybody to give comment on Ferguson. I, I was just asking if he might got any, any, uh, any praise offering they want to give, any testimony. And Brother Edward stood up. And here's what he said. He said, in the area that he lives, children are taught from an early age to hate Authority, hate police. And he said, it comes from their relatives and it comes from the music that they listen to. And he said, I am not going to raise my boys that way. I stood with my, I just went. Do you know why? Because right here, when we are judged, we're chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Black folks and white folks and brown folks are all going to die and go to hell. Unless they become children of God 
and they let God correct them so that we are not condemned when God gets ready to condemn the rest of this world. Look at Revelation 3.19. Revelation 3.19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. God said, if I love you, I will chasten you. Who wants God to love them? Raise your hand. Then you want God to whoop the fire out of you. Where do I want to go? I got so much to preach on this. Can I preach some of this again next Sunday? Okay. Y'all said so. So turn in your Bible to. Turn to Psalm 89. Psalm 80. Yeah, turn to Psalm 89. That's where we're supposed to go this morning. Remember what I told you about what God said to David concerning Solomon? You remember that? You remember when God said, David... I'm going to give you a son, and I will be his father, and he will be my son. Now, if he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of men, but my mercy will I not take from him as I took it from Saul. Do you remember me telling you about that? That as long as you allow God to chasten you and correct you, God will always forgive your sin. Who... Uh, uh, I will admit, I will admit that there have been times that I have been afraid that God would not forgive me. Raise your hand. But He will. Because He knows He can chasten you and correct you. And eventually, listen to me, you know what God's trying to do eventually? He's trying to get you to stop doing that. And he, God has the exact count. I guarantee you God's got a ledger of exactly how many times he's going to beat you until that. And when it gets to like, I don't know, the hundred thousandth time, then God will say he won't do that anymore after that. I guarantee you God knows that number. So I would say to you. If you want to sin, if you're a Christian, you want to sin, you want to sin all you want to, go ahead. If you can take the beating that goes with it, go for it. Because I guarantee you, the more you do it, the harder that beating's going to get. Turn to Psalm 89. Are you there? Say amen. Verse 30. God said, this is a double witness. God told David. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Let me remind all you parents. Yelling at a child is not the rod is it just yelling at them and getting on to them that's not the rod is it God didn't say yell at them when you're raising children God said use the rod That's how God is raising me. He's using the rod to correct me from my sins. And I know when he does it. Verse 32 again. Then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. 
Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. That is exactly, that is exactly what God told David about his son Solomon. God says the same thing to you. If you sin as a Christian, God said, I promise you, I will chasten you. See, that rod comes in many forms, and I haven't even talked about that yet. But you always know when you're getting it, don't you? And God says, as long as you let me do this to you, you'll always be my son, and I will never break my covenant with you, and I will never stop forgiving you. That doctrine is what's missing out of what some people call eternal security. What some people call eternal security is they pray a prayer and then they can go out and do whatever they want to. God never intervenes. God never touches them. God never tries to alter them. They just go out and do whatever they want to and God still has to let them in heaven. And that is a lie. Second, I have what up on the screen, Second Samuel 7. That's what God told David concerning Solomon. And I won't read that again. I won't go back over that again. But let's turn to uh, Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. When you get there, then I want you to look at what I have up on the screen because we'll spend a little time in Proverbs and I'll, then I may let you go but I may not we'll see how it goes alright I mean this is the Lord's day right it ain't yours it's the Lord's day now look up on the screen in, Pro, in Psalm 118 18 the Bible said the Lord hath chastened me sore but he hath not given me over unto death do y'all see that who in here could stand and tell a story about how you almost died or got killed? See? But he didn't kill you, did he? He let you live. See, God was chastening you. But he let you live. He did not give you over to death that's God's mercy even while he is using the stroke of his rod on you God is still having mercy on you because God's not going to beat you until you die some people can be beaten until they literally die from it that used to be punishment for people to be beaten until they are beaten to death. But God did not do that to you. And then Proverbs twenty two fifteen: Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Now let me tell you something. I want everybody to listen to me who has children. Forgive me. Well, I, I, don't, I don't worry about forgiving me for saying this because I'm going to say it anyway. You're not raising little angels. You are raising little devils who are full of foolishness and their heart and their sin nature they have inherited from their mom and their dad. Am I right? Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But God said the rod of correction shall drive that foolishness far from him. Now, here's me pretending to serve God. But what's really in my heart 
is foolishness and God knows it. And so God has had to take me and use the worst rod I've ever had in my life and chasten me with it to take that foolishness and drive it far from me. There are things I will never do again. Never. Because the rod that chastened me, I never, ever want that because I know the next rod will be worse than that one. Remember what I asked you last week about who, out, who had to go out and cut their own switch? Mom had to do that when she grew up. And if you went out and didn't cut an adequate switch, then my grandmother went out and cut a switch that was twice as bad as the one that you would have brought in and you got it twice as bad as you would have gotten it the first time. And I grew up in a day where if you got a whipping at school, I got a whipping at home for the same thing. You know why? My mom knew that inside my heart was foolishness and wickedness and laziness. And she said, I'm going to drive it out of him. Now, Proverbs 23. And then we'll let you go from here. Withhold not correction from the child. Number one, this is to all you parents with your children. Withhold not correction from the child. And remember, speaking to them in a loud voice is not the rod. They are not the one, they are not one and the same. It takes a physical strike against that fatty tissue on their backside. That's what it takes. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Now he may think that he's dying. But he's not going to die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt... Look at your Bible. What does it say? Shall deliver his soul from what? Hell! God knows that... The foolishness inside the heart of a child will deliver them to hell. God also knows that there is a possibility that your rod, your chastening of your child will deliver them from that. You see, my mom didn't wait till after I got saved before she started whipping me. She was started whipping me before she ever started bringing us to church. So when I heard a preacher preach, and I heard more than one, but when I heard preachers preach about how God punishes the wicked with everlasting fire, I believed him. Do you know why I believed him? Because I knew my mom chastened me and delivered punishment to me for things that I did wrong. And I knew that the things that I had done wrong in God's sight he was going to deliver me to everlasting punishment, the Bible says. That's in Matthew 24. That's in the story, or 25, the story of the sheep and goats, where God divides the sheep from the goats, and the sheep are delivered to everlasting joy, and the goats are delivered to everlasting, he says the word, punishment. So those in hell get to stay in hell forever, and they are punished 
every second that they are in hell for their sins. Who wants that? I don't. I don't want it for me. I don't want it for my wife. I don't want it for any member of my family. And I don't want it for you. And I don't want it for anybody that lives in this area. I don't want it for anybody in the world. So verse um, 15. My son. This is God speaking to you. You speaking to your children. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. Yea, my reign shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. Let not thine heart envy sinners. Let me read that again. Let not thine heart envy sinners. Don't. Can I, t- can I tell you something, what, uh, something good that you should probably enact in your life? Don't make friends with lost people. Because you'll end up envying their sins. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine-bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and the drowsiness shall clothe the man with rags. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. By the (laughs) truth... Hearken unto thy father that begat thee. And despise not thy mother when she is old. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begatteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bare thee shall rejoice. Do you think that your mother wants to be speaking to you on the other side of a glass while you're in prison? You think your mom and dad want to see your face on the news? Your mug shot on the news? Do you think your mom and dad want to see you on the news with your mug shot because of what you did? I have, I have one prayer I pray every day. God, please, don't let me bring reproach on your name. God, don't let me embarrass you. God, don't let me be known to the world as a hypocrite. Because you're my father. And I want to honor you. My mother's still alive. And my mother called me the other day and she said, Son, I just want to tell you. I'm proud of you. And what you're doing. 
the night that I was ordained to preach in 1990. My dad was there. And my dad before, when I, had, when I called my dad the night, I was 16, when I called my dad the night that I announced the call, that I, God called me to preach, my dad was out of town working. And I called my dad to tell him. And he's, he told me then, son, make sure you're doing the right thing. Because at the time, he didn't think that that was worth doing. But between that time and that night in 1990, when they ordained me to be the pastor of the First Free Will Baptist Church in Richwoods, Missouri, my dad came to that service. And for the first time ever, my dad said, Son, I'm proud of you. And when I stand before God, I want my father to say, Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. I want my dad to be proud of me. Lisa and I want to be proud of what our children do and not shamed by it. You should want to bring honor to your mom, to your dad, even if all you have left in this world is your heavenly father. You should want to bring honor to that father. Amen. I want you to bow your head. There's somebody that I want to hear this message that probably won't hear this message. But those of you who are hearing it, if you're here today and you want to bring honor to your earthly father, your earthly mother, You want to bring honor to your heavenly father. You know, your mother, your heavenly mother is heaven. Jerusalem above is the mother of us all, the Bible says. Heaven rejoices. If you're here this morning and that's just in your heart and that's what you want to do. And you know that it's going to take God's help doing it then I want to invite you to come down to one of these benches down here and pour your heart out to God and say, God, this is what I want for my life. I want to bring honor to you. I want to honor my earthly mom and dad. I've shamed them. And I want to change all that. I want to bring honor to their name. Or I want to bring honor to your name, Father. But I can't do it by myself. I need help. I'm opening up these benches for you this morning if you would like to come and do that. I don't believe you have to come down here. You can do it wherever you want to. I mean, I just like to open this up. Seems like it's a good place to come and pray. Father, I come before you, and I thank you, God, 
for correcting me. God, I've been in church all my life, but I had such wickedness in me. And you've been driving it out. And God, I'm not the man that I used to be. And I'm not the man that I want to be. But God, I want my mom in this world to say, Son, I'm proud of you. When I see my dad again, I want my dad to say, Son, I'm proud. When I stand in front of your throne, Heavenly Father, I want you to say, Mike, I know I've had to be hard on you, son. I know I've laid a lot on you and Believe me, it did hurt me to have to chasten you. But Mike, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy that is set before you. God, when you chasten us, you save us from hell. And that's why you do it. Help us, dear God, to never despise that chastening. Help us, God. Because we can't do it by ourselves. Our flesh will fight against us every time. Our spirit wants it. Our spirit wants our flesh destroyed. Because our spirit knows our flesh is no good. So God, mortify the deeds of our flesh. Chasten us when we've done wrong so that we know you still love us. Bless all of those, Lord, who have come to you today to pray. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Love you, Al. God bless you, buddy. Come on. Come back, be with us. Four o'clock today, whether you hear, whether you watch online. Continue to pray for our family. We've taken a hit this week again. So please continue to pray for us. But God is helping us to remain strong for Him. And I thank this church for standing strong for me. And I'll be there for you. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, dismiss these people. Father, I thank you, God, for bringing them into this place. I love you. And I love these people. God, I love what you've done in their life. I I love what you've put in their heart. And I pray, dear God, that each one of them, Lord, that you love. When they get out of line, God, your rod would comfort them. There, Lord, your rod is there, and, and, and we know it's there, and that's what comforts us. It, it comforts us to know, God, that when we get out of line, you will rod us back in. That's why that rod comforts us the way it does. Father, bless our families, help them to raise their children the right way. It's hard in this world. But bless us, we pray. Dismiss us in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Come back be with us. Four o'clock. Four o'clock now. I'll be here. Four o'clock. We'll be here. Four o'clock. Four o'clock.
Love you, buddy. Sorry about what happened to you this week.